so what we had was w of j equal to w of j equal to 0 and then e raised to minus i over 2 times this uh, j1 delta f 1 2 j2 and then we argued that uh, actually this is not what we like to look. So there were two things, one is that this w generates all the possible Green's functions. So w of j can be expanded as sum over 0 to infinity uh, in principle right g n x 1 x 2 x n j x 1 j x 2 j x n okay and the 0th order is uh, is 1 g 0 equal to 1 and so some kind of initial condition I think that is consistent because if I set uh, n equal to 0 then none of these are there and I have this but it has no argument at that point yeah and j is also equal to 0 so it is what we have in front uh, that is just a convention where the g n are the time ordered endpoint functions and technically it is 0 plus and 0 minus. Now here we argued that this is slightly too much information is not packaged very well because this g n contains disconnected pieces as well. So ideally we want to define connected Green's functions so i to the power n over n factorial And yes, integral over the d x is i to the n, right? Otherwise, it will not tally with the simple variational average definition we had made which comes out of that then we define the connected Green's function Green's functions um, you can do it two ways geometrically which we had drawn last time through you know drawing something things like this we had drawn uh, it is sort of obvious what connected means in topology in this simple picture pictorial terms and last time we had drawn three diagrams more because we wanted to get at what is one particle irreducible which is a little more advanced idea not concerned with it right now. So geometrically it is clear what it means but algebraically what you do is uh, 
define it uh, recursively. That is, you say that uh, the connected Green's function is, uh, or rather, you say that uh, nth level normal Green's function is a product of sum over products of sub leading. Uh, so, now that notation gets a little complicated, but what we do is G C let us say R and product over um, all the partitions of n into R uh, and uh, there is a notation for that partitions of uh, so into R1, R2, Rn and then sum over partitions. Okay. And we claim that uh, the two point function is the first connected Green's function with uh, G1 being trivial Okay, G1 equal to 1 uh, equal to G C1, but G2 equal to G C2. So, G2 as we know is uh, this the two point function the Feynman propagator, uh, right. and is a connected Green's function. So, diagrammatically we draw it simply as a line and that is certainly connected. Then you can easily see that uh, you can recursively build up because a three point function would have to be a product of uh, two point functions times a point or it would have to be a graph like this and then so on. So, when you go to higher all you so, so you would have a set of points for n point function you would have some number of points and then you have to see what are the ways of connecting them and n point function is such that it will be product of uh, different ways of partitioning the points and con drawing connected graphs among them and what does that mean? It means the that one has to be made up of lower order connected graphs and so on. So, once you have defined the second the two point function uh, you are fine. Okay. So, you can recursively define like this and uh, now this is what I have not proved so far, but uh, and I actually just meant to summarize what we have done so far is that then we can prove that And here the definitions differ a little bit here yeah. So, here we use w equal w j equal to e raise to i times z of j such that z j actually generates only the connected Green's functions. Uh, rather it is uh, generating function of. and the convention remains exactly the same uh, integral of. So, now I am I can do a little better. 
sum over 0 to n yeah so we can put the summation outside 0 to infinity integral products from 1 to n of d 4 x j and uh, then i to the n over n factorial g n c So, after this the trick we used was to um, do this Legendre transform. So, we were then looking for a way of having a um, functional which is functional of a space time field not a auxiliary current. So, we wanted it in terms of more physical entities rather than some auxiliary entities. So, then we define, so now the story of what is effective action starts after the this background. From J to phi description. by defining phi c to be variation of the z c, so intuitively we want to think of phi c simply as equal to the classical this c is not that c eh? so you want that had to do with connected but this is just classical so phi classical should basically be phi quantum averaged and phi quantum averaged would be equal to integral d q d p phi e to the i s right. But that would be same as doing uh, 1 over i. So, variation with respect to i j of w of j. But we also want to factor out the W0. So, so sorry, all this went into a corner, but so what we say together, so and this is at j equal to 0. So, phi c is. I think minus i variation with respect to j. So, phi classical x is defined to be minus i variation with respect to j of x of log of uh, and now I am going to get some kind of i directly from the exponent. So, I will fix this i, we can fix it in a minute. So, we say it is the log of w and evaluated at j equal to 0. Whatever w of j that remains when you vary, so I, I could have as well put here w of j because I am going to set j equal to 0 in the end anyway. So, it becomes variation of this log and now the way we defined uh, w well, this is of course correct, right? Because that is the except that I, right. So minus i times this is correct, and then log of w is equal to i times z. So that cancels this minus i, and so it becomes equal to simply d by dj x of uh, the z j evaluated at j equal to zero. So, we define the desired phi classical and then the trick which works when 
I think this is so I have never fully understood but I think this is a trick that works because phi is essentially like an extensive variable. So you can do a Legendre transform. So of course you see through the rest you work through it comes out correct but why you would think of Legendre transform I do not know. So this trick is essentially due to I think uh, man called John Alessinio. was I think Schwinger's uh, student or collaborator they did some clever things not very well known outside but once you read the literature you will find them. So one of them is this and uh, then define gamma of phi c to be equal to uh, right integral j sorry write it in this order phi c x uh, j of x but such evaluated at by inverting this relation okay where uh, phi c is equal to uh, sorry dz dz by dj equal to 0 sorry d, d by dj evaluated at j equal to 0 and um, minus w of j uh, z of j but that again is at j c uh, phi c phi equal to phi c I think that is one way that this is specified okay. So you have to evaluate the j by inverting that relation and then we could check that this phi c in the free field case actually satisfies so I am now comparing what I have here. So there is an overall minus sign this term was written after this term so minus this plus that uh, unlike classical mechanics and then j is replaced by this functional. Then we can check for the free field case very easily that the gamma 0 turns out to be nothing but the free field that uh, box plus m square phi c is equal to j follows from the gamma so you can write free field gamma is nothing but the usual So that is rather reassuring and it generates the interpretation that uh, the quantum gamma the quantum action is going to be the classical one plus some quantum corrections. Now you may say this looks uh, rather too simple how is this going to work when I have more complicated situations. and. Uh, the answer is that in the presence of a potential we play further tricks. So for an interacting theory at least uh, minus technically here. Yeah. So at least so long as the V is a, 
functional only of phi and not the derivatives uh, we can write that minus i So we simply claim that if I have to uh, if I have to multiply what is going to happen as you remember the whole action is going to be I mean the path integral is going to be integral d etc e raised to minus free and then plus this part right. So we are focusing on the inside of the uh, functional integral and then the e raised to i times j occurs. So consider the piece in the path integral uh, in the functional integral which looks like this. So if I had uh, a phi here what I did was to hit here by e raise to minus i d by dj. If I now have a whole thing like this all I say is that the d 4 x carries on but it it is not affected by this is just the measure of that times e raise to i j phi integral d 4 x ok. So this is a big formal step wherever you see a phi, so what we are trying to do is I have the full path integral which is integral d p d q or d pi d phi e raise to e raise to i times integral l free l free minus v and then plus i plus i is already here but I could write it separately plus i integral j phi. Now I know how to take care of L free along with J phi but I do not know what to do with this V so it is like this right. So what I do is I rewrite the e raise to minus I V D 4 X as this operator acting on what is going to come there but now this is just a formal this is this does not involve uh, <coughs> phi anymore it only involves j. So I pull this out completely of the path integral and I say that therefore and well we have been using Lagrangian version for long now so let us not worry about the pi part. Uh, e raise to i times integral d 4 x l free minus v phi plus i integral j phi d 4 x becomes equal to since the v now as this operator does not involve phi 
I pull it out of everything including the functional integral phi to write e raised to minus i times integral d4 x of so all this is completely formal now it has no meaning by itself. Okay, in the exponent, but then let us see what remains here. What remains is d phi e raised to i d four x l free plus i j, but that is our old w of j for free field theory. So this is just a clever trick for writing this out to satisfy oneself that one can formally write something. In practice it will work because uh, this variation with respect to j, you, so you can uh, the v will be fi usually just phi to the 4 or something like this you know it will be a mono, it is uh, it's a monomial of some kind. So, you can always use it to extract Green's functions up to a particular order and they will involve uh, not just the not just the simp not just two point functions you remember in free field theory the only thing we got out was two point functions or their products. So, here you will begin to get more things out and uh, I did intend to do it, but somehow I did not I want to do it next time. Okay, so you can use this to derive between g n and uh, g 2 and gamma n. Now, this may look a little bit of uh, what does this mean? The answer is that actually the n point function um, the g n will look like and I think the connected one G and C. So, G and C which has the structure of, so it has some n points right that is what G n means. But this thing when it is connected boils down to uh, lines like this with G 2 is inserted. dot dot dot, but then an irreducible piece which will be gamma n and plus lower order terms ok. Uh, what I do not uh, this is whether it is probably the full g. So, what one finds is that the n point function as it can contain the lower pieces which are products of uh, lower connected parts at the nth level you will find that the for the most non trivial term there will be product parts but the non trivial term has the structure of a vertex some blob which you cannot further resolve a one particularly reducible diagram so this will be a times lines with the g 2 insertions on them. So, this is how the particle and vertex interpretation emerges the fully interacting quantum field theory 
so long as you still use perturbation theory because after all we pretended that you could treat V after you do the free field thing. So, you have to think of this as in some sense small otherwise these manipulations do not mean that much. But to the extent that you can try to isolate the effects of V, those effects will can be broken up into an irreducible endpoint function times just propagators, two point functions. So, that is the idea of uh, uh, defining the effective action. So, that these are the physical meanings of the various quantities that we have been introducing and gamma n is what will enter into the expansion of the gamma in terms of its argument phi n just like the g times j's where the gamma n are. So, I can leave this here because that is the it is very similar to that. and uh, D4. Okay. So, if, if you expand the gamma like that, then those gamma n's have the significance of being the highest order non irreducible non reducible part in the endpoint Green's function. Final comment is that this gamma there are no derivatives appearing here now uh, of phi. So, it is functional only of phi, but we do know that uh, in fact the free part will contain d mu phi d mu phi. So, there is an alternative expansion which is a derivative expansion. So, this these gammas can contain non local and so alternative expansion is so such gamma n also contain non local pieces so an alternative so you see it is just gamma n x1 x2 xn times a product of fields, but which are at different points. Ideally, we want something. So, if it was a local field theory, and there was temper. So, what I mean by this functional, if it it was a local functional, then there should be a delta four of x one x two x n, so that everything collapses to same point. But the general one is not like that, obviously, because there are derivatives. So, so an alternative definition is uh, is a derivative expansion or alternative uh, description rather not div where we anticipate our traditional free field and simply say it is equal to d 4 x I think this is given in Ramon's book as well. and minus 
v effective phi. Assuming no higher order derivatives, of phi c however that extension is also possible okay here by proposing that the only derivative terms i have are uh, d mu phi d mu phi up to some functional which is function only of phi but not of derivatives and whatever remains I call v phi v effective this is a local expression it, it is powers of phi at the same point x there is only one x integration now ok. So, this is a local theory because everything in it is local to one point x this kind of expansion if it is possible in the case this is possible this ansatz is possible v effective is called the effective potential. and its minima or it, its minima give you the true vacuum expectation value of phi. It, they give you minima, but the expression I am about to going to, to write has both. Of the uh, uh, so, what we mean is uh, the true vacuum of the theory I should say yes. it could be vacua right it is not necessarily only one true vacua of the theory occur at d v by d phi equal to 0 and d square v by d phi squared greater than 0. So, this could be various there could be several such phi i and the d square v by d phi squared essentially as the interpretation of the mass. So, since L free had the form d phi squared half d phi squared minus a half m square phi square uh, d square v by d phi square is is the effective mass squared at that i. If you have a complex field then you will not have a half factor but you have to take care of that. Okay, so, this is what we mean by our symmetry breaking which uh, everybody has 
this is where we cannot explain to general public what is Higgs mechanism all about because it is the V effective as a function of phi c which has minima at and actually that is a complex scalar field. So, on a circle of radius mu which is approximately 250 GeV. So, now you really know what the Higgs vacuum means. So far you are just varying V which was not the V effective, but luckily because the theory is renormalizable polynomial remains the same, but the coefficient get quantum correction. So, they are not just lambda over m squared the many, but including quantum corrections. Okay. So, but this is the real meaning of what symmetry breaking is. If the effective potential develops this then it is there. <coughs> 